Hello everyone. Welcome to the class on Angina Pectoris series part 3. In this video, I will be explaining about the drug treatment of angina pectoris, especially beta blockers. I will discuss pharmacology as well as medicinal chemistry aspects of beta blockers. Till now, we have seen in part 1, we have discussed what is angina pectoris. It is commonly known as chest pain. It occurs mainly because of ischemic heart disease. Ischemia means reduced blood circulation. If this continues, it may result in myocardial infarction. Infarction is complete occlusion of blood supply to that myocardium that may cause necrosis and this is nothing but heart attack. Now, in second lecture, in part 2 of angina pectoris, we have seen the mechanotherapy for angina pectoris. Mechanotherapy means surgical intervention like coronary artery bypass surgery, how it is done and then how stunts are placed along with angioplasty. Along with this, we have seen nitro vasodilators, the mechanism of action, pharmacology, structures we have seen in second part. Now, in this part, we will see about beta blockers. Now, beta blockers are very popular group. In detail, beta, adrenergic beta blockers. These drugs are very popular. The reason is they are used to treat hypertension. They are used to treat hypertension. They are used to treat angina pectoris. They are also used to treat arrhythmia. They are also used to treat heart failure. You can see the importance of this class. They can be used to treat majority of cardiac diseases. They are used to treat hypertension, angina, arrhythmia and then heart failure. Let us see the brief details of beta blockers. Now, beta receptors are nothing but adrenergic receptors. Adrenergic system is nothing but sympathetic nervous system. This is a branch of autonomic nervous system. Now, sy sympathetic nervous system, the neurotransmitter is noradrenaline, which is also known as norepinephrine. When the neurons releases noradrenaline or norepinephrine, it will be acting on alpha receptors as well as beta receptors. In case of alpha, you have alpha 1 and alpha 2. In case of beta, we have beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 receptors are there. Now, beta 3 receptors are not completely explored and beta 1 receptors are primarily present on heart whereas beta 2 receptors are present on respiratory tract. Now, today's topic is about these receptors. What happens with them? Now, let us see the biochemical mechanism of action of beta receptors. As we have seen, when sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, it releases norepinephrine. The released norepinephrine will be acting on beta receptors as well as alpha receptors. Alpha 2 are present on the neuron, they are known as autoreceptors, whereas alpha 1 receptors are present on blood vessels. Now, our class of concern is beta 1 receptors which are present in cardiac cells. Now, beta 1, beta 2, both the receptors are a type of G protein coupled receptors. When beta receptors are activated, both of them will be activating a type of G protein known as GS protein receptor. Activation of this one results in adenyl cyclase activity. Adenyl cyclase is an enzyme which converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Now, the cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. Remember, kinases are the enzymes which will attach phosphate groups. So, the activated protein kinase attaches phosphate group to calcium channel on the cardiac myocyte. Now, if the phosphate group is attached, the channel open occurs and calcium gets into cardiac myocyte. Now, once inside the calcium also activate sarcoplasmic reticulum. This sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium. So, once it is activated, again it releases calcium. So, the increased levels of calcium primarily causes contraction. Remember, the activation of beta 1 receptors on heart finally results in contraction. Why? They, they cause the release of calcium. One more point, calcium is not only required for contraction, it is also required for nerve conduction in heart. So, both of them are under the control of calcium ions. So, this is the biochemical mechanism of action of beta receptors. Now, our topic is beta blockers. So, what happens with these beta blockers? Technically, these beta blockers are nothing but competitive 
competitive receptor blockers receptor blockers you need to understand what is this competitive receptor blocker is imagine you have a beta receptor is there now the natural ligand for for this receptor is nor adrenaline it can also come and attach and the beta blocker drugs can also come and attach so there is a competition to attach with this receptor for natural ligand as well as beta blocker drugs when natural ligand amount is more it goes and binds with this receptor when beta blocker concentration is more it goes replaces this noradrenaline and it goes and binds there because there is a competition to bind with the receptor they are called as competitive receptor antagonist now why antagonist because it blocks the effects of noradrenaline because it is blocking this receptor now what is the action of beta receptor it increases calcium now the calcium is causing contraction if you block this receptors calcium will not be increased if it is not increased it causes relaxation so the overall biochemical action of beta blocker is it reduces calcium levels and causes relaxation now what is the physiological effects of this one beta blockers are causing reduced levels of calcium now uh, let us understand what is the function of beta receptors on heart beta receptors as i told you they cause activation of calcium increased calcium causes increased heart rate increase in heart rate is known as chronotropic effect chronotropic effect chronology means timely event normally the heart rate is usually it is 70 to 75 beats if noradrenaline is released and it is acting on beta receptor it increases heart rate to 100 beats per minute so that effect is called as positive chronotropy now second one beta activation of beta receptor also causes enotropic effect though we write it as ino it is pronounced as enotropy enotropy means increase in force of contraction that means the contraction of heart will be done with more forceful thing now what happens with this is you need to understand with the certain volumetric parameters in normally when heart is contracted when this left ventricle is contracted 70 ml of blood comes out with each contraction from this aorta in a healthy individual this is what is known as stroke volume that means with one stroke 70 ml of blood comes out of this heart if noradrenaline is released and it is acting on beta receptor the volume which comes out of the heart will be 100 ml per stroke because the contraction force is increased more volume comes out this property is called as positive enotropic effect now beta blockers what are they doing they are blocking the effects of beta beta receptors so what happens instead of positive you have negative effects are there negative inotropy negative chronotropy that means heart rate is reduced as well as force of contraction is also reduced one more effect as i told you in the previous slide calcium is also required for nerve conduction nerve conduction so beta receptor also causes one more effect called as positive dromotropic effect dromotropy means increasing con nerve conduction so nerve conduction is also increased with beta receptors so when you block this receptor nerve conduction also reduced so this is the overall physiological effect of beta blockers if heart rate force of contraction is reduced what happens the oxygen demand on the heart is reduced when oxygen demand is reduced you are treating essentially angina pectoris now coming to the drugs the prominent important drugs are see propranolol is called as a prototype drug in case of beta blockers this is the first drug to be manufactured and synthesized now propranolol this is the structure of propranolol let us see the chemistry aspects of this drug now when you name when you give nomenclature according to iupac you need to follow a certain order that order mnemonically i write it as yes s p u f understand this words yes stands for stereochemistry that means whenever you are naming with iupac the first thing comes is stereochemistry second one substitution after stereochemistry you need to write about what is the substitution is third one is parent one what is the parent molecule next one is about unsaturation whether there is a double bond or triple bond is there the last one is functional group 
So this is the sequence you need to follow when you write an IUPAC name. S S P U F. Stereochemistry, substitution, parent chain, unsaturation, and functional group. Now usually the stereochemistry part is eliminated because every atom has got a different stereochemistry and and it it is a cumbersome process. So most of the standard books also do not talk about stereochemistry. Next substitution, parent, unsaturation, and functional group. In this propanolol, you don't see unsaturation. So we we will eliminate this unsaturation also so what is left we need to talk about substitution parent and then functional group look at this iupac name this iupac name starts with one isopropyl amine this group is isopropyl and amine in combination this is known as isopropyl amine so isopropyl amine is substitution for this molecule now you have two different things substitution and functional group how do we determine usually a hydrocarbon chain will be substitution whereas functional group is the one which will react with other molecules look at this oh group this part is propanol group in this propanol oh will be reacting and this will determines whether it is a functional group or not so normally substitution is with hydrocarbon chain whereas functional group you have a group which will react with other molecules now what is parent out of this hydrocarbon hydrocarbon groups when you have an aromatic ring this one becomes priority the high priority one will become a parent molecule so now look at this when you name you start with a substitution and then you write a parent and then you write about functional group what is the substitution isopropyl amine now isopropyl amine is present on this first carbon now what is the parent carbon at first second and at third carbon you have a parent ring is there what is that parent ring one naphthyl oxy now what is this naphthyl group naphtha means this ring is called as naphtha now i'll see wherever you replace a hydrogen with another atom there you will add yl i'll so naphtha becomes naphthyl because a hydrogen is replaced with what oxygen so this parent chain becomes naphthyl oxy now what is the functional group this is propanol 3 carbon prop at second carbon oh is there so you write it as 2 propanol so iupac when you follow simple rules writing iupac name will become easier now the next one let us see the synthesis of this propranolol the propranolol synthesis starts with one naphthal so this is the starting material to this this molecule is added now look at this uh, molecule three membered ring with oxygen heteroatom is known as oxirane now this this one the second one is known as chloromethyl oxirane this is a methyl group to that chlorine is attached and the ring is oxirane so this is known as chloromethyl oxirane now the advantage with this chloromethyl oxirane, oxirane is this chlorine is a very good leaving group it easily comes out right now in order to proceed this reaction a base is used koh what is the job of base it will remove this hydrogen as proton and that proton combines with this good leaving group cl and comes out as minus hcl hydrochloric acid now what happens hydrogen is removed chlorine is removed and to this oxygen this carbon attaches this is what happened here now after this this oxygen ring is highly unstable it it easily opens up the ring so it it easily opens up the ring and it creates a carbon with a positive charge now that carbon with positive charge will combines with this isopropyl amine this reaction is carried in presence of water it is reflected at 40 degrees centigrade so what happens is the proton from this water molecule goes binds with this oxygen oxygen and becomes an alkyl group and the carbon with a positive charge forms a bond with this amine and you get this connection now you need to understand what is happening in the reaction then synthesis will become easier now next one we see next topic is sr see in order to understand sr you don't need to buy heart anything just see the marketed drugs analyze them then you will get the sr patterns we'll look one by one look at them all of them there is a common molecular pattern is there all of them contains an aryl ring aromatic ring so the name is aryl aryl ring is attached with what an oxygen atom in all the drugs so i have taken three clinically used drugs propranolol metoprolol etanolol we are analyzing sr features all of them contains aryl group which is attached to oxygen which is known as aryl oxy after that what do you have a propanol group in all of them you have a propanol group is there so aryl oxy propanol 
and propanol is attached to what an amine group so it is called as propanol amine now this part is known as pharmacophore 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 means the com combination of atoms or groups which is responsible for mechanism of action so aryl oxy propanol amine must be present in the molecule to show beta blocker activity so this is the first point you can see analyze the molecules and then you can write it down now the next point now next one see at the amine end you have isopropyl group is there in certain molecules isobutyl is also there what is the nature of isopropyl and isobutyl they are all lipid in nature so at amine end you have a lipophilic group need to be present I'm sorry we cannot say lipid it is a lipophilic group now what is the next point now leaving propranolol look at the other drugs you have a substitution at which place 1 2 3 at 4 place of the ring you have a substitution so four substitution is allowed four substitution also results in retainment of activity so these are all the primary structural activity relationship features first one what is a pharmacophore next one where do you have a lipophilic group next one where is substitution allowed scr is very simple if you analyze the structures now the last one adverse effects in case of adverse effects the primary adverse effects of beta blocker is bradycardia bradycardia means reduced heart rate as we have seen beta receptor activation increases heart rate when you block the receptors heart rate is reduced that condition is called as bradycardia now second one second one is known as bronchoconstriction see we are uh, primarily we are looking about beta blocker activity but you have beta 1 receptors as well as beta 2 receptors are there beta 1 Uh, present on heart whereas beta 2 is on respiratory tract if you block beta receptors on heart you will see reduced heart rate decrease in calcium things but when you block beta 2 receptor it causes bronchial tree constriction so if you use an agent which is blocking both the receptors beta 1 will give advantage effect that is reduce heart rate but beta 2 block it results in bronchoconstriction propranolol is a beta blocker that means it blocks both the receptors then it has got this problem whereas etanolol and metoprolol are slightly selective towards beta 1 so that side effect is reduced now third action third effect is known as av block atrio ventricular block i told you already calcium is also responsible for nerve conduction when you reduce the levels of calcium nerve conduction is also reduced so the conduction from atria to ventricle nerve conduction is blocked that is called av block now the last one peripheral vasoconstriction occurred with occurs with beta blockers why this is happening let us understand this concept see when noradrenaline is released it will be acting on alpha receptors as well as beta receptors when you block beta receptors the released noradrenaline will be acting on alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 1 receptors are present on blood vessel they will cause vaso constriction because beta receptors are blocked whenever noradrenaline is released the the complete noradrenaline molecules will be acting on alpha receptors and they will cause peripheral vaso constriction so this is about beta blockers in next class we'll we'll see about calcium channel blockers